another very nice example of a rescue radio coming today for service. This is a Midland Ready Rescue and you can see this one is in super duper condition and we'll see if we can get a date off the back of it, May 1982 and it's serial number 3722 and it's in incredibly good condition again I wouldn't have thought this has been used a great deal and it's just in for a quick tune up and so uh, let's take some figures off of it and see if we can improve it again we're doing all these tests on 12.8 volts and we'll go with transmit power first and you can see there we're doing just shy of four watts about three and a half watts and we'll just check what frequency that's doing that on okay so it's a little bit low 27.79107 the channel 20 so we'll I think we can adjust it on this I think we can bring it up I was looking at the um, here's the uh, the layout chart for the ready rescue I'll try and keep the glare off of it and there is indeed unlike the ZX there is a frequency adjustment down the bottom and a VCO adjustment uh, we're not going to touch the VCO because uh, I'm pretty sure it's not going to need touching we will check it on all channels make sure it's sending and receiving Okay, um, hit the first snag. Very, very, very little to no deviation. We just got the deviation meter here. There's, there isn't any deviation on that signal. So um, uh, the customer or viewer didn't mention that, um, said that they were both working, but there's no, no uh, modulation on this one. So uh, we, we shall check and see why that is. We'll do that before we do anything, I think. Um, before we even test receive, we'll take this apart and see what's going on there. And just like the ZX1, it's the four screws off the back and then a removal of the control knobs off the front to split the thing apart. And we'll go straight to that deviation control and see why we're not getting any deviation at all. And my suspicion there may well be a dry joint somewhere here. It looks um, <clears throat> fairly clean inside. Um, can't see anything. I can't see any damage to the microphone wires here. Highly unusual for electric mic to go. It's possible, I suppose. Um, there's a little bit of like some sort of liquid on top of the synthesizer chip there. I'm not sure what that is. Um, if it's just some cleaning fluid has been in there or something I just wiped it off <clears throat> so there's evidence of something having been sprayed or got in there um, now if you try and take the back of the case off you'll find there's resistance and that's because it's this that's fixed to the case so you just be very careful don't pull the back of the case off of these without disconnecting that from the antenna socket first okay so if you do need to get to the back of this you will have to disconnect and solder this joint here to pull the back of the case off to get to the board. Now, if this is a persistent problem with the um, deviation, I might have to do that because I suspect there might be a, a dry joint. So um, let's put some power into it again and see if we can tap around and uh, I probably will disconnect that, I think. There is a nut on it actually, but I think I'll probably unsolder it and uh, then we can get the back of the case off. Right, we've unsoldered the connection there and we've got the back of the case off now so we can look at the back of the circuit board but what we'll do is we'll connect the antenna back up to it and try and tap away on the back of the board with a uh, the handle of a screwdriver to see if we can find out if it is indeed a, a dry joint causing the lack of modulation and then if we can't spot anything we'll, we'll start from the microphone onwards. Right, we've just got the President Randy monitor in here and if we key up and we actually touch the connections on either side of the microphone we do get a little bit of crackling if I can just show that to you by doing it like this. So we're keying up and then we're just going to just tap on here and you can hear on the radio you can hear that scratching sound so there's no observable deviation but Obviously that's causing, whether that's just a spike RF wise, I don't know, but that tells me there's something amiss. So what we'll do is we'll, first off we'll unhook this ceramic, this this microphone got, uh, 
cartridge and then we'll we'll plug another one in and see if uh, if that makes any difference the only elements i've got are these little fellas that should uh, should be okay tiny we'll get that hooked up to those leads and see if it does anything there we go <clears throat> that's tiny isn't it let's try that no nope. should be getting something there shouldn't we but no nope. not getting a thing not a sausage if you've got to start doing any kind of significant work particularly on walkie talkies and handheld radios like this and ones that are in good condition it's worth removing the cases completely because the sort of thing you'll catch it with a soldering iron you'll scratch it when you're moving it around that type of thing so uh, as we don't need to worry about the speaker for now I've disconnected that and we'll just worry about the problem that we have in hand which is the absolutely zero lack of um, deviation modulation <clears throat> and there is does appear to be on the back a few little dry joints I can see if I can take you in there's one just there which I can see straight off the bat just there so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly rework some of that with the pine sill which is the soldering iron and we'll try that and see if that's brought us any anything back <clears throat> okay so we're going to take this shielding off here then we've got one more joint there which is soldered on the board we'll take this off and sometimes very often if if we've been in a damp environment at any point in their life or if it's spent one winter in a boot somewhere you can easily get condensation under these things so we'll have a little look and indeed i think i found the problem without even getting the solder on that can you see right in the center of your picture it's fairly obvious isn't it you see that little broken leg there and that was underneath that screen so always worth taking those screens off even if it takes a bit of work because I can almost guarantee you that is where our problem lies let's go put the kettle on and then we'll come back up and see hmm right the dry joint wasn't the problem um, but the problem is within the LM324 the the operational amplifier here <clears throat> now I've pulled the schematic diagram for a Maxon 7e which is the same the same circuit and just using basic simple uh, tools here really we've got our uh, audio speaker here which we can use to listen for the signal which is very useful and then across the back of the board we can we can know where the LM324 is it's just in there and we can using um, a combination of the signal generator here we can generate a signal and then follow that signal through the audio circuit I've done this before on the channel you'd have seen me do this now our signal is getting through to this point here and there, there is a problem around these diodes of some kind right, starting to lift the top plate to get the uh, <coughs> LM324 out we've got it out and let's see if we can get another one in there and see if that's uh, gonna fix the problem I've only got LM348s in uh, which is an upgrade anyway so we'll try and sneak that bad boy in there and see if it springs it back to life all right let's just try transmit there we go so we're just feeding the signal in straight to um, the mic input so it was the uh, LM324 we've got an LM348 in there now which is definitely an upgrade and it's a brand new one actually I've got in for a a project so yeah that was not seen that before one of the actual amplifiers within that package had gone the others were okay but that one had gone there you go and we'll put some brand new diodes in there these original ones possibly be no good so we'll pop new ones in there and I'll just have this little microphone plugged in so we just do a quick audio test there we go the Randy's uh, switched on just out of shot, so let's just key it. One, two, one, two. <laughs> Sounds pretty good, yeah? I've not even adjusted the, because uh, <clears throat> I was playing around with the deviation. So we'll set it up with the case microphone. I think we'll pop it all back together and then we'll carry on with the, um, the setup on it, yeah. That was a bit of a deviation, <laughs> if you pardon the pun, wasn't it? That's something to watch out for, though. There you go. All right, let's test it now. One, two, one, two, one, two, testing one, two. There we go, that's fine. There we go. 
All right, we'll just adjust the top right trimmer to get it bang on frequency. You're looking for 2779125. There we go, 2779125. All right, so on receive, with 100 microvolts on, that sounds awful. Uh, I think somebody may well have been fiddling with this. Um, probably trying to get the audio working. So let's um, have to do a ground up setup. Uh, VCO is in, I think. Well, VCO should be in. It's locking anyway. So, um, yeah, somebody's been a fiddling, I think. But let's um, look at our... our uh, this is our uh, crib sheet or crib photograph. And let's try and bring this in. We'll start off with the... Uh, the RX ones there at the top. So we're still getting really poor receive, so I'm going to try changing the subsystem chip. There, I've had a little probe around. I'm going to give that a go, swap that out, and see if that improves anything. Got a brand new one. Right, we replaced the ceramic filter there. It's a tiny bit better, but I think that's about as good as it's going to get. Um, I mean, you could go through and replace all of the components and it only be a little bit better. <laughs> I mean these were never the best in on receive these or the 7e uh, they're always a bit noisy and this one's no different but we can hear it right down to 0.5 of a microvolt no problem at all so it's just one of those things and um, yeah there just really isn't um, enough time and money to go in depth and find out um, exactly the root of the cause it might be one component it might be a multiple of them but um, there we go so we're going to pop this back together and I bet you it works just fine on the test with Mick anyway, so uh, we'll pop this back together and it's certainly a lot better than it was because <laughs> it was not transmitting no sound whatsoever before. And the squelch is okay, it's all done. We're on 0.32 of a microvolt. Opens up at 0.5. Goes off at 0.35, it's a bit of hysteresis in that, which is all right. There's the screen back on, all looking good to go. Let's just pop the case on and then we'll just have another listen to it. Right, it's looking pretty good. This is 0.5 of a microvolt, you can hear this. That's sounding pretty good. Like I say, there is a little bit of an underlying crackle with this set and um, I thought I'd say that there's a grounding issue on my uh, setup here which we'll, we'll sort out, but that's, for 0.5 of a microvolt, that's about, about what you'd expect. I do have another, um, Ready Rescue on the table here, which I can just set up quickly just to show you that that's probably about the same. There's the there's the other Ready Rescue. You can see it's pretty much exactly the same as the other one. So I think it's just the characteristics of the the Ready Rescue. I'm afraid it's um it's not as good as the ZX1. Let's throw the ZX1 on there as a comparison. Uh, you'd have seen the video for that already, but we'll just quickly throw this customer's ZX1 on there to see how much clearer that is. There you go, there's the ZX1. You've not got that crackle underneath it. It's much clearer. Same signal, different radio. Probably a slightly higher pitch sound with the ZX1, but that cuts through better in my ears anyway. Right, I hope you enjoyed that quick video and you found it useful. Um, no test with Mick on this radio. Um, his shack was out of action for a few weeks, so we couldn't actually do an over-the-air test. But I did test it here within the shack and uh, to the other room with another handheld, and it, and it sounded absolutely great. So I you hope you've enjoyed that one. Please catch us on the next one. If you haven't already done so, please like and subscribe. We'll see you soon. Take care.